Hi students, this is Mr. Bickford and this is uh, a quick introduction to chapter 9 area. I wanted to go over a couple of big ideas and give you a couple of tips for this chapter before we actually get into uh, lesson 1. Uh, the first thing that I want you to know and remember is when you hear the word area you should think this other word and I'm gonna write it down right here. I'm gonna make it in big letters. Okay, when you hear the word area, okay, you are always counting You are always counting these things, and I'm wondering if you can guess what it is. Area, you are always counting squares. When you hear the word area, you should automatically think squares. Uh, by the way, you can write this note page down, uh, but it's not required. Uh, but you do need to know these big ideas. So when you hear the word area from now on, you should always be thinking squares. We are counting squares with area. Automatically, area, squares. Uh, now the squares can be different sizes. The squares, you might be counting square millimeters, which would be about this big. You can hardly even see it. Okay, right there is a square millimeter. It is the tiniest mark on this ruler. Okay, if I hold that up, one little mark is a millimeter. So that's how big this is on one side. You might be counting square centimeters. Those would be this big. Okay, there's a square centimeter. I'll do that in black so that you can see it a little more. There's a square centimeter. I can't even use my mark. The tip of my marker is bigger than that other one. You might be counting square inches, which would be squares that big. So the size of the squares ch can change, okay? but you're always counting squares. This would be a square foot. I'm not going to draw it, but it would be one foot, one foot, one foot that would be a square foot. They might be square meters. Okay, again, I can't fit that on the, on the screen, but a meter stick, if it's this long on each side, that would be a square. I mean, a square meter. Uh, if you were counting, trying to measure like the size of a city or a state, you might use square kilometers, where one side of the square is a kilometer or a square mile. So the squares can be very tiny up to very big, but the huge idea is your area always counting squares. Okay, now let's go to uh, an example from elementary that I'm sure most of you will remember. Here's a rectangle. The dimensions of the rectangle are 3 by 2, so the area, we're counting these squares, these are square inches on this paper, okay, but now I'm going to write down a few reminders. Area of a rectangle is length times width. That is the formula for area of a rectangle, and we'll get more into formulas this chapter. Uh, the area of this rectangle, then, would be 3 times 2. 
which would be 6 square inches. Okay, now the, uh, I also want to talk about how you can label area. You can write out 6 square inches or whatever kind whatever size squares you're counting you can write down 6 square miles what you can write it out there's lots of ways to indicate area for the label for area i can i can abbreviate 6 square inches okay i could also say 6 inches squared. That exponent 2 means squared, but notice that it has to be squaring the label of inches. 6 inches squared. Okay, All of these are good for labeling area. Good, good. A real common mistake that kids make when labeling area is they put the exponent on the number. They will say 6 and put the exponent 2 there, and they will say inches. That is not 6 squared inches. That is 6 squared, which is 36. This is indicating a line that's 36 inches. It's not counting squares at all. So for this rectangle, this is no good. Okay, That notation does not work. Be careful of putting the exponent next to the number. If you're going to use the exponent to indicate squares, it has to be squaring the unit. Um, okay, that's pretty much it for the intro to area. Uh, the other quick thing I wanted to tell you is that for this chapter, you're going to be better off, instead of using our normal uh, AVID focus note page, instead of using this one, this chapter, um, use some grid paper. And you can draw the line to make it like focus note, like focus notes, but here is an example. Okay, use grid paper and then you can draw a line so we'll still have the two air, two sections of the focus note page. Uh, but for especially for this chapter, because we're counting squares, using this as a note page is going to be easier than using uh, the regular avid focus note page. Okay, um, that's it for the quick intro to chapter nine and look soon for lesson one.